morning. Welcome everybody again to another uh, Between Two Bookshelves. Today we are going over Cilantro Diaries by Lorenzo Gomez uh, III. And uh, my name is Atilio Denuno, and this is Ashley. Welcome hey guys. <laughs> and um, and th this is kind of an interesting book. Uh, do you want to give a little summary for it, Ashley? Or? Yeah, so Lorenzo Gomez grew up in San Antonio, and this book is basically business lessons that he learned from his childhood um, into kind of his early adult stages and later on within his career. Um, just kind of how he learned stuff the hard way, um, how he maybe skipped out on the hard way and a couple of life lessons. Um, and so it, should, it breaks it down into really simple um, steps. It's one of those books that I'm like, it needs to get into high school curriculum because I think it's like really cool that way. Um, so it's a really great book. The tagline is business, business lessons from the most unlikely places. So. Yeah. And do we have any announcements before we get started? I guess uh, everything. So if you're checking us out on YouTube, if you're checking us out on Facebook, wherever you're kind of finding us, um, this might even be on Twitch here pretty soon. We might be uploading these on Twitch. Uh, we kind of stopped doing our live streams there because we had a couple complications. Can't wait to get back together <laughs> into like the real world. But um, wherever you're kind of catching us, check out the descriptions, check out some of the stuff around the videos. You're going to find links to go purchase these books online. Um, so when you make purchases that actually supports the channel, but really what it does is we, we uh, are donating 100% of our profits to a nonprofit called Room to Read. Uh, it's a great nonprofit that we felt fit this uh, channel this the, the 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 vision and the mission for this uh, these videos very well and that it helps get um, you know maybe women or uh, people who uh, are aren't fortunate enough to be able to buy or get books kind of across the world uh, with those books so kind of connects the right people with education and information that they need um, and so we felt it was just a really good mission for us to kind of go after that and so uh, if you do end up liking this review and you like what we have to say about the book, definitely go check it out online and uh, purchase it. All the proceeds are getting donated. Um, so that's definitely something that uh, you can try helping us out with. <laughs> so nice little mission there, but anything else, Ashley? No, I think that's it guys. Um, I think we're ready to jump into it. what did you think about the book, Atelier? Um, I liked it. Um, immigrant mentality. Yeah. Uh, so, I very much fall under that blanket. I think that I kind of grew up with it being a first generation um, Italian here. So both of my parents are Italian and um, I don't know if my siblings got it as much as I got it, but um, like Italian was literally my first language. Um, people make fun of me for my name in school. Like people, like I get it. Like I know that there's like a different world other than just like this white American situation. Um, and I get the work hard. I started working when I was like 12 years old making salads in restaurants. Uh, so the book really resonated with me. The book resonated with how I behave like in my day to day. Um, so it, 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 it resonated with me, but I think that this is a book that shows uh, people who maybe don't have this mentality or people who uh, you know, aren't first generation um, what it is like to be or to have this immigrant mentality and why the parents kind of push these beliefs on people and why, you know, how the whole situation started. Um, so I like the book, like overall. Cool. What did you think about readability? What would you score out of two? So I liked the readability, um, a lot, a lot, a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. um, that it, Kind of felt like it was a little droning sometimes, like beating a dead horse a little bit, which we've seen in some other books. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grade it a 1.6. 1.6 for readability. It was good. It was just a lot of storytelling and some things it felt a little, not redundant necessarily, but like I said, it was kind of like droning in some spots. It's good. How about yourself? I thought it was super easy to read. Um, I... I'm going to go ahead and score it a two out of two, just because for me, storytelling is something that I engage in and like to listen to. Um, and 
San Antonio being so close to where we're at, we're in Lubbock, Texas. I used to live in San Antonio. So that was kind of fun for me because it was a lot about the city um, and about kind of the culture within that town. And of course the Hispanic culture and that is my background. And so for me, readability was a solid too. It was a super easy read. I've actually read this book before um, and I read it on a road trip out loud to my husband while we were, you know, on the road. And so it was, it's a good read and we both enjoyed it. And so for me, it, it's a two just because it was easy. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And then, uh, so, so for, for new listeners, uh, we're grading everything. We have five criteria. Everything's on a scale from one, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, from zero to two. And so our total gross score at the end of this is going to be a 10 uh, out of 10 as a maximum possible score. Um, and so our second uh, criteria that we have is relevance, right? Yes, relevance. And so for, okay, I have a question. What do you think this is relevant to? Okay. Like, what is the goal there? I, I think, okay, because I grew up with, and I feel like I very much had an immigrant mentality growing up, mm -hmm. um, just because that's how my parents kind of taught me. I kind of like always fit into that mold. Um, and so I think that it's like a life book. Um, and it just, ha it just so happens that this guy worked hard, you know, had good friends, was polite, you know, hit all these check boxes. Um, and it just so happened to affect his career. Um, but really, I think this is like a life book. Okay. Does that make sense? I think it's like, uh, I think it's a life relevance book. Um, rather than like a business book, maybe. Yeah, um, I think my score kind of reflects that. For me, I gave it a one out of two, so straight middle in the road. I think that a lot of the points here are relevant for business, um, but with the title saying, you know, business lessons from unlikely places, mm -hmm. that doesn't really tie it in for me as much as I would like it to be as far as whether it's relevant or not. Um, but I think there's a lot of valuable stuff in here, especially for it. So like you're saying, people who maybe haven't been introduced to this type of thought process or, you know, upbringing or culture. So I think that's really cool within this. But for me, it's a, a solid one. You know, I think I'm going to grade it there too. Um, the, the business lessons part of that, um, it, it just kind of was like tied in, but really the unlikely places um, mm -hmm. might be, you know, he was kind of like uh, trying to relate this to the audience that maybe doesn't have this mindset. So not the minorities, definitely the majority. And so I think maybe he's, he's trying to like move the majority into the, mon the minority by, by kind of like educating them on this, on this situation. And I think he went about it through business. Um, and maybe that's just his niche. Maybe that's just like what his kind of situation is. But yeah, I, I think relevancy, I'm going to give it like a one, probably like a 1.1, 1 .1, something like that. It's just like a little bit, it's a little bit more than just kind of middle of the road because I do think it's very relevant to just like life in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I think because it, because he was trying to like move an audience into a different thought process, it kind of lost some of its relevancy. Yeah. There were definitely business undertones. Every life lesson that he learned, whether it be from the rules his father implemented whenever he was a young boy to learning that you need to have your own personal board of directors to help you kind of make big life decisions. It was like, it was all translated into business in the end. Um, but it could be translated a bunch of different ways. And so just knowing the concepts, I think is what Atilio is saying is a little bit more life applicable than business maybe sometimes. Um, yeah. but that is a kind of a good segue for our next category, which is applicability. How easily do you think these life lessons or business lessons that Lorenzo Gomez the third um, found are easy to apply? How how do you think that is? Um, part of me says that they're really easy to apply mm -hmm. um, because a lot of it is just like attitude. A lot of it is just like, hey, open your eyes, take experiences. Like instead of complaining about stuff. Instead of, instead of like being entitled on certain things, instead of uh, looking at your day-to-day -day as just day-to-day, -day, you know, introduce some competitive aspects to it. Introduce being able to learn from anything. 
Um, like every opportunity is a learning opportunity. How, like I'll even go as far as like just watching TV can be a learning opportunity, you know, mm -hmm. just from the shows and stuff. Like what are the characters? So like part of me thinks it's like very applicable. Part of me thinks that um, it, it's just like, if you just have an attitude change um, and if you just kind of like do it, you can do it. Um, so with that being said, other part of you thinking <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, um, you know, I, I, I kind of grew up with that. I always like, even when I was, even when I was mopping the floor at two o'clock in the morning at my restaurant job to close up, um, you know, I always wanted to do the best job ever. And so like, I always had that idea, but I know, I know that I had coworkers, you know, I think one of the things he says in here is like, be the top, like be in the top 10% of your peers, like beat the 90%. Um, but that means that there's 90% of people who are, are not trying to do things the way that you're doing. It. That means mm -hmm. that there's 90% of people who are the bottom 90%, you know? So, so I understand and I have to kind of empathize and, and understand that there's 90% of people who just don't have that attitude that mentality you know yeah sometimes we're just kind of under the, under the assumption that everybody has a same like clearly everybody would want to do their best clearly everybody want, but it's not the case which is so surprising and that's where you get big statistics like that um but and so i you know Brene brown said that you have to give everyone the benefit of the doubt most of the time people are trying their best most of the time they're trying their best and if you give people the benefit of the doubt, you'll see that they're actually trying to do what, what is the, you know, what is their best idea of what they're trying to do. So with that being said, combining all this together, I'm going to give it like a 1.6. I'm going to say, if you actually care, you can do it. But it is going to take a little bit of, you know, so I'm going to give it a 1.6. Double 1.6, weird, but. Good. Um, for me, I have it at a 1.25 and I think partially because there's a lot of lessons in this book that if you haven't already started following require a lot of backtracking and recovery of either your reputation, your habits and your attitudes, things like that, where it's like breaking bad habits. Um, Lorenzo really nailed in like how important reputation is, how important your attitude is on a day to day, how important all of your, your friends and people in your life. So like creating this board of directors, he, he emphasizes the idea of our own personal board of directors, just people who you actually care what they think, um, and their advices. And so, um, implementing that and maybe st taking a step away from those who do not, it, that ju it just like seems easy, clear, and concise, but maybe not so easy to execute upon. So I think for some of it, it's super easy and straightforward, but for the others, it might be a little bit more deep and complicated. So I'm going to give it a 1.25. Um, what's our next, uh, we got readability, relevance, applicability. Now we got value versus expectation. Yeah. Okay. This is the great, the great equalizer score. So for me, it was a gift for me. Um, I'm hearing an echo, sorry. Uh, my aunt gave it to me for Christmas. She's a, from San Antonio. Um, and it was just a random gift for my aunt. My aunt always gives me the most random, funny, like San Antonio-esque gifts. And so I'm not a huge reader up until the point of us starting this. So it was a big deal for me just to pick this book up and read it on the road. Like I usually don't do that, particularly because it's an actual book, <laughs> not an audio book. Um, but so for me to actually get through it and read it and have such a good readability score and just like an easy read, my expectation was none because I don't really enjoy reading or I'm working on enjoying reading. Um, and it kind of exceeded that. And so I'm going to give it a solid two just because I think you know, I didn't know what to think about it, but I think there's a lot of good um, nuggets in here. And I think I'll definitely recommend it to some people, not for everybody, um, but like my little sisters and 
you know, maybe some friends and family. So for me, it's a two. I feel like this is one of those books that's like, I wish that I could make it like a criteria to read before working for it. Like I've said that about several of the books that we have where it's just like, maybe we should. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not like we have bad apples right now or anything like that, but it is like a good pre-framing book. It is a good book to, uh, and like, I, I, I didn't have really much expectation other than the fact that you kind of recommended it and Mm -hmm. I respect you. And so that's enough of a recommendation, you know, like, so, so there was a little bit, of stuff to kind of expect there, but not like anything out of the, uh, nothing out of the, like the ordinary, I guess, uh, other than just like someone recommended it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, cause you, you didn't really give me any information about it. You were just like, it's good. We should read it. <laughs> there were some things I picked up and I was like, perfect. <laughs> um, so my expectations weren't super, super high. It wasn't like a, I don't think it's like a New York bestseller or anything or like a Amazon bestseller even. I think it's just kind of like a, maybe even just like a local book that just happens to do really well. Um, And so expectations were pretty low. I think the value there was pretty high. I didn't like, it didn't provide so much value to me that I was like, oh my God, this is game changing. Like I need to apply. Cause I I feel like I personally already kind of fit the mold. Um, So I'm going to give it a one, I'm going to give it a 1.5 as far as value versus expectation respect you as a person so that's pretty good and then da, 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 da. so it kind of just comes out to 1.5 for me cool Sweet. well then our last category um of reflection kind of is the butterfly effect which um our other categories are kind of self-explainable but the butterfly effect is um does it give you butterflies in your stomach does it make you excited you know does it pump you up um and for me while i really enjoyed this book it was more of an enjoyment read they were like good stories, good life lessons, but I wasn't like, oh my gosh, like the things I read in this book, kind of like you were saying, Antonio, are going to like change my trajectory. They are, you know, amazing. And I'm going to take off now that I have this information from this book. Um, and I think also maybe Antonio, it's, I kind of had some of the same mindset already. Um, so for me, I only have a 0.75, for my butterfly effect, just because I did enjoy the book. So I don't want to give it like a zero or anything like that, but um, it didn't make make me jump out of my seat. Yeah. I I think I'm right there with you. Um, I like literally this guy's dad sounds a lot like my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, And so like a lot of those life lessons were there. A lot of things from like elementary and middle school and just like little tit, like little nuggets here and there. Uh, You know, my dad, he doesn't, he doesn't talk a lot, but when he does talk, he has some stuff to say, right? Um, sometimes it's praise. Sometimes it's, uh, you shouldn't do that kind of vibe. Sometimes it's like, I don't recommend that. Or, you know, so he has kind of his things and, and he's a super hard worker, top of his field. And so I, I see like some similarities in that case. And so Butterfly Effect, it didn't feel like I, it, it didn't feel like I needed to change anything, but it was kind of like a heartwarming tale, I guess. It was kind of like a, um, yes, yes. Like every time I heard a story, I was like, dude, I feel like I've been there, like yeah. literally. Um, and so, so that, that's to me. So I'm trying to think of maybe someone else who maybe does need that attitude adjustment, who maybe, who maybe could use some of this. And maybe they're saying to themselves, you know, what, I don't need to do that. I can just take the easy way. Or maybe I don't need to do that. I can just use my dad's money to do this. Or maybe, you know, I don't need to do that. I have my entire fraternity to lean back on and 25 of those guys are good guys, good guys. Uh, you, know, tw- you know, so so maybe, you know, I could see where this is kind of like a little floating a little bit in the middle here. So I'm just gonna land on a one with it for butterfly effect. Um, it, it was a good, it was a good, book good stories it's it's fairly short guys like it's a quick read um and because it is so easy you can kind of fly through it um i think it was a really great book um like i said i'll probably recommend it there i made some notes in here on things that are important to me or maybe that stood out more than others um but overall my score was a seven out of ten for this book yeah mine's a 6.8 we're always so 
the same. That's good, I guess, you know, I guess the books are pretty like the low margin of error. Um, if there was a necessity score, I would, I would give it a two. Hmm, that's interesting. Was, yeah. <clears throat> um, I like I, that. Yeah, yeah. So if we were going out of 12 or something, I'd give it a two. Um, because absolutely, like every, every boss wants their employees to act like this and every employee wants their boss to act like this. So if this was like a, if this was straight up a, um, a business book that you were giving to business people, I think the necessity is a two. Um, that's not a score, but <laughs> yeah, it's not one of the criteria that we have, but it's definitely something worth mentioning. We were kind of hating on, not hating on it, but just like maybe the business aspect isn't as strong as you would expect it to be when the tagline has the word business in it. Um, but I think expectations of a good employee are having these basic life and morals and like these thought processes. And so that makes a good employee, which makes in turn a good business or a potential career or you know, whatever your goals are. So I think that was really good about it. Um, I liked the book a lot, so I recommended it. Um, it's just such a, it's a, such a good staple book, I think. Yep. Yep. So that kind of it. I really liked it. I would recommend it to you guys. If you guys are looking for something that is business centric, but not so heavy on the technicality or the terms or needing, you know, pre- you know, you have to have some type of extra knowledge, like a middle schooler could read the, not, not in a bad way, but like it's, it's simple. <laughs> like a middle school student could read this and understand, you know, if they had the attention spans, what, what Lorenzo was trying to get through. Um, so it's just a really easy, simple read. So if you're in super heavy business books right now that are super technical into your field, this might be a good breather um, to kind of reset you. Yeah. I would um, recommend Good closing statements, good closing statements. Our book, if you're keeping along with us, which holy moly, our pace is blazing. Um, so we're doing, <laughs> we do a book every two weeks. So if you are trying to keep up with us, kudos. Um, I'd love to know who's trying to keep up with us. Uh, so if you just comment, this is, this is the Between Two Bookshelves challenge. We're calling all of the viewers out. Um, so we have a pretty good pace going. Uh, but the next book that we're doing is called uh, The Checklist Manifesto, right? And who's the author? Atul Gawande. Atul Gawande, if, if that's how we say the name. I know. Uh, but we'll go ahead and put a link as well uh, in the descriptions, wherever you're kind of seeing this, um, on, on being able to get it. So that way you can just one click over to it. So definitely check that out. And uh, I guess I'm pretty excited. I've actually heard some pretty good things about it. I've had a recommendation from a, a previous business partner um, recommend it. I've had uh, some pretty big names recommend it just in general, some business consultants. So uh, there, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of an expectation coming into it. So we'll see. Well, awesome. I'm excited about it. You guys make sure to check it out. Um, you should be able to get prime shipping on it. So um, you have two days for shipping and then, <laughs> 12 days to read it if you order it right now um so you guys should be good it's from it's what atelio said should be a great book um i'm really excited about it and you guys may have noticed we reverted back to our virtual <laughs> between two bookshelves um just in our area cases have started to go up again for the coronavirus our videographer has been recommended to quarantine and so it's just the safest for everybody and uh I miss doing it in person. It was a tease to get to do it last time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, cool. Well, thank you much, everyone. That was another Between Two Bookshelves. We'll see you guys next time.